A key challenge facing the HIV response today is that 14 million people living with HIV don't know their HIV status. And the people that are not being reached are men, key populations, and young people, many who are reluctant or hesitant to access existing services because of the fear of stigma, discrimination, potential criminalization, um, as well as unfriendly services. Why are you giving me this? You yes, need to yes, we can. It's very, it's very accurate. So an HIV self-test is a simple, rapid HIV test that you can use in private. It's discreet, it's convenient, it's easy to use. Um, it gives you the autonomy to, to learn your HIV status, uh, to be the first to know, uh, and then make a decision about where to go to access services, um, to get guidance and support after you've learned your status first. There are a number of, of HIV self-tests that are available uh, that are quality assured and regulated. Um, there are oral and blood tests uh, for self-testing. Uh, the test results are uh, available in 20 minutes or less. Um, and, and these options are critical for users who have different values and preferences. So for some, an oral test is easy, it's painless, they don't have to prick their finger. Um, that's just a swab of the mouth. And there are also blood tests, which are finger prick uh, tests that are, are simple and quick. For others, a blood test, uh, they may trust blood more. They may prefer to have that result. So there's different options for different people based on what they desire or need. The costs vary uh, substantially. There are a number of efforts underway to reduce the costs, and uh, current projects are offering them for free or subsidizing them to um, create access uh, for people that are in need of HIV testing at the moment. If you have a reactive self-test, you can re be referred to a, a provider who can confirm your status and link you to treatment. If you have a non-reactive or negative self-test result, you can seek services to be linked to a number of effective HIV prevention services such as condoms, male circumcision, or pre-exposure prophylaxis. Self-testing is very convenient and in WHO, in our guidelines, we have evidence uh, that shows that self-testing increases the uptake of, of HIV testing among men um, and the male partners of pregnant and postpartum women and that increase is doubling that uptake, which is really beneficial to reaching this population that's not accessing existing services. Uh, we also know that we're missing key populations because of stigma, discrimination, potential criminalization, and unfriendly services. So self-testing is, is discreet and convenient and can allow people to have access to testing in an environment where they feel comfortable. Um, and then they can seek services uh, when they want to or how they want to. And for key populations, uh, we've got evidence in our guidelines that show us that's increasing the frequency in which testing uh, is done. And that's really important for key populations because of their high ongoing HIV risk. So WHO currently recommends that men who have sex with men test every three to six months, depending on their HIV risk behavior. And right now we know that people are not testing frequently enough. Uh, so self-testing can potentially help people test as much as they need um, and also increase their uptake.